Hello everybody again, Miss Fleming here. Um, today we're going to be working on the second clarinet part of Grand Gallop, the Circus March. Um, I hope you remember a discussion that we had in our sectional a few weeks ago. So this Circus March is supposed to be exciting, it's fun. Um, circuses should be fun. It's going to sound kind of like halfway between a dance and a march. Um, it should be very light, not too heavy, even though there are a lot of accents and we're playing very loud a lot of the time. Uh, we don't want that to drag us down or make us sluggish. Um, it should be very exciting and moving forward. Something that'll help us with this is if you look at the very beginning in parentheses, above the first four measures, it says one beat per measure. So obviously there are more than one beats per measure. Uh, if you look at your time signature, it's in two, four. But this just means that we need to feel the macro beat. So in class, whenever we count rhythms uh, for our daily warm-up drill, we're keeping our micro beat up here on our collarbone and our macro beat and our foot. So this is kind of similar. Um, when you play this with a metronome, I'd like you to play it with a macro beat, so one beat per measure on your metronome, uh, just so you can kind of get a feel for that. Uh, but you're still counting like one and two, and I'll give you an example of that. One, one, one te, two te, one, two, one, one, one te, two te, one. So if you notice, I'm counting exactly how it's written in the piece, but I'm making sure that I feel it in one. Something that always helps me visibly, uh, I like to use my hands in a circular motion. It just makes me feel like I'm rolling along and it helps me land on one each time, but not kind of like drag behind. It kind of helps me go forward. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start at the beginning. And for this, I'm just gonna count all the way through the first ending and then back to five through the second ending. One, one, one te, two te, one, two, one, one, one te, two te, one, 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 one te, two te, one, 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 two te, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one te, two te, one, two, one, one, one te, two te, one, one. One, one te, two te, one, 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 two te, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two te, one. So a few things that I want you to focus on whenever you're counting this is remember we count with the correct dynamic and with the correct style. So whenever there's an accent in your piece, you should be counting the accent. Um, for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you, but remember, anytime there's an accidental, bring it out, that's very important. Um, it's not an accident, <laughs> even though it's called an accidental, it's not an accident. It's there for a reason, so make sure that everybody can hear it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and play through this so you can get it in your ear, but when you're practicing at home, I'd like you to uh, count it with a metronome, count it and finger it with the metronome, play it on a concert F with your metronome, and then put it on the correct notes. Always on a metronome. Everything you do when you practice should be with a metronome. So I hope you notice my dynamic differences, my style. Remember, it's kind of happy and bouncy and dancing, but it's still a march, so we still need emphasis on beat one. Um, and then when we're going into 25, I drop down to mezzo piano, and that should be a pretty big difference between forte and mezzo piano. Looking ahead at 25, again, um, there are a few accidentals in here. Make sure to bring them out. So we have F sharp, so you should be playing first finger F sharp, uh, no thumb. And then we have an A sharp in here. Remember, A sharp is the same as B flat, so it's your A key and your register key. That's your A sharp. Um, and we're switching from A sharp to B natural. That's a big change. So we're going from only two fingers to all of our holes covered. So make sure that you're really blowing fast air and your fingers flip really quickly. We wanna make sure that when we play A, A sharp, that our fingers are still close to the holes. Like right here, I'm not putting this finger on a hole but when I do have to play B natural, it's just like that. 
very minimal effort, very close together. I'm gonna go ahead and play, pick up into 25. And when we count and play, I just wanna point out that if there's a pickup into the phrase, always play the pickup or count the pickup. Otherwise, you're not practicing the whole phrase because that is the beginning of the phrase. That's a part of your part. So make sure that you include that every time you count or play. earlier when telling you to play F sharp with your first finger. I forgot that we're coming from an F natural. So make sure that you're playing F natural with your thumb and then F sharp should be the bottom two side keys. So. Practice that a few times and that's going into measure 36. Um, also make sure that the second time you play it, uh, you're changing from a mezzo piano to a forte dynamic. That should be a big difference. Um, and again, if you have a difficulty going from the end of the first ending back to 25, take a pencil, circle measure 25, put a star next to it, do something that tells you this is where I need to go back to so that you don't get lost in your music whenever everybody else is going back to 25. Um, moving on to 43, we have a few big changes here. So we just ended on forte and the pickup into 43 is piano. So this should be a very big difference and it should be a clue that something interesting is happening. There's a key change. And even in your pickup note, you start on your new note in the key. So this new note is B flat. Remember it's a register key and your A key. Um, so because that's in the, the key now, uh, whenever you see that, it's not gonna be an accidental. Just remember that it's a B flat. Um, However, now that B flat is in the key and B natural is not, if you have a B natural in your part anywhere, which we do not, I don't believe, yeah, we do. It's after 67. Um, whenever you get a B natural, you should bring that up because that is not accidental. There's a lot of G sharp, so pay attention to those, um, as well as D sharp. And remember, D sharp is regular D fingering and just the bottom side key. Um, again, for the purpose of time in this video, I'm going to go ahead and just play it for you. Uh, but you should be counting with a metronome, counting and fingering with a metronome, and then playing it on a concert F with a metronome, and then putting it on the correct notes with a metronome. <laughs> Sorry, I have to pause here, but there is a page turn. Um, so now I'm starting at 55. part I remember talking about this we're the glue of the first and the thirds we're kind of in the middle we're holding them together we've got a lot of notes that both of them play so whenever we're playing higher notes um, I don't necessarily want you to back away from them because they're very important but remember we really need to dig into the lower notes to bring those out because it's gonna be harder for the audience to hear them anyways so anytime you go down to a C or your D sharps even even the E's I think you can play those a little bit louder than piano um, and you can do some phrasing in there too. Um, same with the big leap. So for example, I'm gonna start in 55 and I want you to listen to the difference between my B flat and my E. I really dug into the E. Now it's not like popping out of the sound because I kind of crescendo into it. Um, it shouldn't be a very stark difference between the two, but there should be something that you can hear like, oh, that note is interesting, you know, it's lower, it's prettier. Um, so that, that's very important to keep in mind. Um, again, I also did that for accidentals, so at 59. Any 
anytime you go down to the low C, anytime you get a G sharp, um, just keep that in mind when you are putting it on the right notes. All right, looking ahead between measure 75 and 83, um, we have a rhythm that kind of repeats itself a few times. That same rhythm is between 83 and 91. And then we have almost the exact same rhythm between 91 and 95. Um, and again, when we're counting, we should do it with the right dynamic and the right uh, style. So there are accidentals in here. Make sure you're throwing those in. Um, I'm just going to count four bars between 75 and 83. Uh, but those are the same bars between 83 and 91. One, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, one. Notice how it's very loud and bold and proud. And then the accents, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on the front of the note. I'm going to go ahead and play it on the correct notes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my bad. Let me try that again. And for this one, um, we're going B flat, B natural, C sharp. So there are two different ways that you can play a C sharp. We can play it in our right hand. And if you play it in your right hand um, of these four keys, it's going to be this one. Or if you want to play it on your left hand, that means you need to play your B natural on your right. So your B natural would be the lowest one. And then your C sharp would be this one. So just make sure that whichever one you do decide, you practice it that way every time because you need to really drill that in. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and play between 83 and 91 because the notes are different, but remember the rhythm is the same. And really dig into that G sharp, G sharp, A, B, and the B natural is also out of the key. This is an accidental note, um, so really bring that one out as well. Now looking at 91, this is almost the exact same rhythm, but instead of the two quarters in the third bar, we have a half note. So it's one, two, two, one, two, two, one, one, two, one. And I'm going to play this for you. And remember, D flat is the same as C sharp, and we're going from a C sharp to a C. So do left hand C sharp. So all you have to do is pick it up, and you're at C. <laughs> And again, looking at the dynamics, we started a mezzo forte and crescendo back into fortissimo to 95. All right, the last section of this piece is 95 to the end, and it's kind of similar to the lyrical side earlier. This time the whole band is with us, um, again, and this should be not necessarily super connected because we don't want everything to sound slurred. There should be distinction between the notes, but it should be connected with air speed, air stream, and really remember to dig into the dynamics or anything interesting that you might see like accidentals. I'm just going to play it for the sake of time. I'm going to play to the end. This is pick up to 95. <laughs> should really focus on the very last note. It's got a rooftop accent, which means it's quite a bit shorter than a normal accent, but there's still a lot of weight on it. And we're going to be playing this note with everybody in the ensemble, so it's important that we make sure and we practice on beat to and off before the te. So if you notice, there is a rest in the te. We don't want to hold over because then it's going to sound funny if there's one clarinet hanging over. Um, again, dig into dynamics. Uh, all of this is written at fortissimo, but we do need some shaping in there. So shape wherever you see accidentals. I hope this video was helpful. It's a lot of fun to make these, but I can't wait to see you in person and work with you in person again. Um, happy practicing, and I hope to see you soon.